For a second time, howdy, I'm Shu. <laughs> uh, Jevia, what happened this week? Okay, guys, so the first story I'm going to cover is from Belarus, and uh, the Belarus Railways hack marks a first for ransomware, where the Belarusian politically motivated hackers known as Belarusian cyber partisans announced on Twitter and Telegram that they have breached the computer systems of Belarusian railways, the country's national services. What do you guys have to say about this? I'll jump in. I just think that this is a great example of, of people who aren't even motivated by money, but, but they understand the power of saying, no, wait a minute, you can't bring those troops across our land because cyber attacks, you know, ransomware, but everything else is just being used for power. And they understand it. Yeah, I mean, the, the age of hacktivism, we all thought it was dead with Anonymous, but it's clearly alive and well. Yeah, what's interesting is I don't think we've seen a politically motivated hack in the U.S. since the abortion clinic. Yeah. Uh, stuff a couple, a couple yeah. months ago, which is which is really fascinating. It, it, it doesn't crop up too often, but when it does, it's very interesting. And the, the ethic breach, of course, mm -hmm. as well. I mean, we, we saw a lot of them with Anonymous back during Occupy Wall Street, and they didn't mm -hmm. actually accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. But I think that we're going to see it much more as a weapon of war or a, a weapon of protest. Mm -hmm. That's right. I definitely think if something happens in, uh, in Ukraine, you're going to see uh, that used on both sides as uh, as one form of uh, of weaponry. Yeah. I want to point out that they're also calling out, like they're they've called for the release of fifty political prisoners. So yeah, I'm sure how that ties into this. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I like to think of hackers of the Joker, like when you see him ranting on Batman. On the dark night and you and you see him saying oh, i'm a man of simple taste and like I, I like powder dynamite you know things exploding well i like to think of hackers like that every now and then like one of them would actually be like the joker and they would want to publish for example the pfizer um secrets and and all the, the data they have on the vaccine they just publish it because they want to see the world burn or something like that. I mean, not everybody, of course, does that. Luckily or unfortunately, I will leave the audience to decide that. But every now and then we get one rogue hacker that would say, hey, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to make a difference. <laughs> I don't know if it is a good or a bad difference, but they are out to, to make a difference. Well, and you know, I think for most people, we've heard, oh, cyber, <clears throat> cyber warfare is worse than conventional warfare and nuclear warfare. Well, I think now we're beginning to see it where the real power in the world, I mean, someone can literally pull some strings with either they can hack something, tie it up in knots, steal all the information, embarrass everyone, and they can force decisions like at the UN Security Council level. It's, it's powerful, right? It's really powerful. Yeah, I mean, th this was, so Belarus, uh, the citizens of Belarus, what, what recourse do they have? If, if troops are coming into their country, um, if they're dealing with, you know, a regime that is uh, maybe a dictator or, you know, has dictator-like qualities, uh, the average person can't really do anything about that. But when you deal with uh, the internet, and cyber war, anyone can do anything, right? Amazing. And, uh, yeah, and and so you know, it, it's not like uh, citizens these days have a lot of, of power other than the power of protest, but there's also the power of, of cyber war. Um, and and I think that with uh, political issues this year being so hot, we're going to see uh, citizens taking that power into their own hands. And, and for, for better or worse, who, who knows what, what the recourse will be? You know, uh, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about re-evil being arrested. Uh, I guarantee re-evil breaking into colonial pipeline uh, was a direct cause and effect for them being arrested. And so, you know, 
you, you can have actions that have wide ranging consequences that they may not always be intended. On, on the same hand, it's interesting to see, there's like a, if you give a mouse a cookie type effect, which is, you know, sure, okay, you tied up all the rails, maybe we release the political prisoners, but the question is where it goes from there. So I think it's a very blurry line. Um, I, I, I can understand and sympathize with some of the folks that, that tied up the rail system and why, um, but it's a, it's a very tricky power that's obviously unmonitored. And so it can right. it can easily be used for the wrong ends. Yeah. Tom. I think something to consider or think about is the elasticity of the fact that for two years of this constriction of of freedom for things, we don't. There's no analytics. We haven't we haven't visited this before. And now with Ukraine, Belarus, and, and Russia coming into play. We don't know. And so that does two things. It ups the ante because of the unknown. So therefore, the powers that be don't necessarily know how to react, whether it's via cyber or via troops coming in. And to Steve's point about the, the general populace, and because so people have been so pent up, so getting out and doing something and showing something means something, but being ex-military, Doing something cyber, you take away the 